we're very excited at the Regional Arts and Culture Council to be launching a new initiative um, that will begin the hard work of restoring arts education access in our schools and um, doing this in a way that every child, K through 8, will benefit. And so um, with that in mind, uh, we wanted to spend the bulk of our time here today talking about the Right Brain Initiative. And we have a video that we would like to share um, that will begin to communicate um, some of why we think this is important. And then after the video, we'll come back and have a little bit of a discussion about how this is going to work in the Tri-County area. Let's take out our handy crystal ball. Right there, next to our iPhones and Blackberries. What sort of world will our kids enter? It will be multinational, multicultural, digital, handheld, real, virtual, propelled by images and music as much as words. It will be both more hopeful and frightening than any age before it. And, like it or not, keenly competitive. In that world, their world, factories and foundries won't rule the day, but ideas. Unshackled, integrated, 360-degree imagination. So, we have to ask ourselves, is now the time to pull the plug on arts in schools? The arts, which enhance every aspect of education, from reading and math to critical thinking, social skills and motivation. The arts, where dance, drama, music and motion help young children turn the ABCs into actual literacy. The arts, often the final link tethering at-risk kids to school. Arts woven through a curriculum change have-to into want-to and create places of teacher innovation, community engagement, spirit, and common ground. And while 93% of Americans see arts as vital to a well-rounded education, you wouldn't know it from our Cut Arts First policies. Which brings us to our mission. Brains come with two sides for a reason. They need each other. They fill in each other's voids. One is messy by plan, the other regimented. One is linear, the other bounces off walls. One reasons, the other feels. But what happens when they work together is magical. Magical enough to make kids connect, achieve, aspire, succeed. In a future that needs the full measure of our thinking, we can't leave kids half interested, half motivated, half engaged, half ready. Remember the right brain. It's not an education without it. The Right Brain Initiative. Great. So now here to talk more about the Right Brain Initiative is the program manager, Marna Stalkup. Marna, why don't you tell us more? Thank you, Jeff. Well, I think that this video really presents a, a compelling case, um, one that is especially true for our community, that is known for fostering creativity, and that is forward thinking. So we do have some data to really support and demonstrate the importance of this to our community. Um, in 2005, a survey was conducted by RAC and others that indicates that 25% of our area residents really feel that the arts are an essential part of every child's education. And then in March of this year, uh, the importance of the Right Brain Initiative was really underscored by uh, some polling of Tri-County area voters, which revealed that 70% of those voters believe that arts education has been cut back to really unacceptable levels. So we're really attempting to do something about this through this initiative. Um, our community, not like others, uh, not unlike others around the country, um, really knows that there are varying degrees of support across the region, um, from school district to school, dist district and school to school. And so there are a number of, of initiatives and uh, partnerships that are occurring around the country. One of those actually is in Dallas, Texas. Um, they began their efforts 10 years ago, and um, that, that effort really has led to some substantial increases in the arts in their schools for every K-8 student, 150,000 students in their school district alone. We were really fortunate to have established a relationship with leaders from Big Thought that agreed to mentor us through the initial process of establishing such a program in our community. 
and that relationship has been really pivotal in moving us forward very quickly. So in the fall of 2007, we engaged the community in a series of conversations about the potential of this in the Portland area. We met from uh, Hillsborough communities over, out to Gresham and south to Milwaukee and all points in between and really brought in members of the community to take a broad look at what do we value, what do we want our children to aspire to, and how might the arts assist in that process. We looked at the opportunities, we looked at some of the challenges that that might, that, that might present as well. In addition, there were interviews and uh, focus meetings with the arts community and with uh, school district leadership. And we talked with them about some of the same things. And what resulted from all of those conversations and all of those interviews um, was really a, a stakeholder feedback report that we synthesized down to a purpose statement that has really been our compass and our guide throughout this initiative. That purpose statement um, reflects in a very broad way what our, our goal is. And our purpose is to achieve a measurable impact on learning by integrating the community's arts and cultural resources into the education of every K-8 student in the region's school districts. So since we have developed this purpose statement, our work has continued. We have continued to engage the community. We have over 100 volunteers who are serving on a variety of committees that are focused on this initiative. Uh, we have a governing committee that works on behalf of the Regional Arts and Culture Council uh, that oversees the whole initiative and its development. We have representatives from the arts community, from school districts. Uh, Gresham Barlow's assistant superintendent, Jim Schlachter, serves on that committee. And they are really guiding our work as we develop this project. Other uh, committees are focused on the actual program design and implementation, mm -hmm. as well as advocacy for the entire project and moving this forward in a very substantive way uh, across the region. Um, then in the fall of 2008, this fall, September, we had our official launch of the initiative with a public event at the Portland Center for the Performing Arts. It was an exciting moment for us. We unveiled mm -hmm. our new identity, which is the Right Brain Initiative. We were mm -hmm. formerly known as Arts Partners. And uh, we celebrated that evening our partners, of, our school partners, our uh, funding partners, as well as our arts partners or the individual artists and organizations who are serving in our schools. And we opened that evening of, as you would suspect and you would hope, with student performers. Uh, we featured the marimba band from Portland Public Schools Buckman Elementary School as uh, guests entered the event. And then the focus of the event really was our key presenter, Michael Geisen, who is of Prineville, Oregon, a seventh grade science teacher who this year was identified as the National Teacher of the Year. And we were so delighted to have him with us. The first thing he asked for was a piano on stage, so we knew we had the right person presenting. Uh, and what Michael's real focus is on using creativity and using the arts and using um, the imagination to really get students at the core of learning. So he was really epitomizing what it is we believe in and what we are instituting with this initiative. We do, uh, as we were mentioned, we are celebrating our partners in our schools. We have four school districts that are part of this initial uh, launch of, of our program. The four largest districts in the area, of uh, Gresham Barlow, uh, North Clackamas School District, Portland Public Schools, and the Hillsborough School District. They have identified a total of 20 schools. There are two here in the Gresham community, Hollydale Elementary and East Orient, mm -hmm. are participating this year in the initiative. Um, we have also identified in the last um, couple of months a total of 10 individual artists and 10 arts organizations to provide those services in schools. This is just the beginning. We will be adding a more partners as we move forward. Um, but these are folks who are coming to the table saying this is the kind of work that we are eager to do. The other uh, group that we celebrated is our funding partners. And um, our funding has come from a variety of sources, which really uh, is really provides a, a way to sustain this initiative. Uh, roughly 50% of our money is coming from the private sector. That's both uh, corporate and foundation money. 30% coming from public sources. Uh, city government, City of Portland has contributed, Multnomah and Clackamas County, and the Hillsborough community has also contributed. And then 20% is coming directly from school districts. Those school districts are committing $15 per child based on enrollment at each school. And that money will then go to direct services to students provided by artists in their communities. So we are really optimistic about the success of this program, given that we have so many partners joining us.